Now, everyone, and welcome to Thriving Court. Uh, it's Muganga. Okay, so today's lesson will be on uh, of the history of Java. So I've decided to redo the video on the history of Java. So I've added uh, the applications of Java. So as we know, Java is one of uh, is one among the languages that are being widely used by developers all over the world and uh, it has quite a number of uh, problems it is uh, solving okay we have uh, issues in, in medicine you know game development uh, uh, in artificial intelligence that java is being used for so it's a uh, good thing that we get to look at the applications of Java so that it can you know broaden our scope on the language. Okay, so let's go. Kindly subscribe to the channel, hit the like button so that we can uh, get this thing going. So, like earlier stated, uh, Java was. Uh, invented by this guy uh, by the name of James Gosling okay so and Patrick Norton, uh, Chris Wolf, Eddie Frank and Mike Sheridan these guys in 1991 were working at Sun Microsystems which is uh, today called Oracle okay so the language was initially called Oak uh, then in 1995 uh, it got renamed Java. Okay, so we are saying that you know Java is being used uh, to uh, do a number of uh, web apps uh, that are run on the internet. Now, back then the desire was not uh, the internet or to uh, develop solutions uh, uh, for the internet. Okay, the goal at that time was to have a platform independent language, meaning uh, a language that cannot, that can be used on uh, different uh, uh, systems without creating uh, problems. So this was the main uh, drive for uh, the coming up of Java. So there were electronic devices such as posters, microwave ovens, and remote controls that needed uh, a language that uh, is platform independent. So by, time, by the time the World Wide Web came, okay, Java uh, was there and it was used uh, to implement uh, solutions for the internet. So you know, as well, the, well, the internet needed uh, a platform independent uh, uh, language. So Java was seen to be at the forefront of computer language design, OK? So Java also uh, adopted, was adopted uh, to, to, to be used as a language for uh, the world wide web. By 1993, it was obvious okay, that Java uh, was solving a number of problems that uh, required portability. Okay? So uh, by then, Java was used uh, uh, to create uh, applications for the internet. Okay? So the realization that uh, Java was a portable language, uh, it was platform independent, made uh, this uh, brought about a switch from consumer electronics such as microwaves, toasters, and, and so forth that were being uh, developed or implemented by uh, the language Java to internet programming. Therefore, the desire for an architectural neutral language uh, provided the spark, okay? 
Hence, Java was architecture neutral, meaning it can learn rather run on on this uh, machine. It can also run on, on another ma machine with uh, different uh, spec uh, specifications. Okay, so Java uh, fit uh, that description, okay. and then uh, yeah. So is Java related to C++ and C? Oh, yeah, sorry, is Java related to C and C++? Okay, we are told that the two languages uh, that form the closest ancestors are C and C++. So uh, Java is said to come from uh, these two languages. That's uh, it's that's where uh, it comes from. So. Uh, C and C++ are among the most important computer languages ever invented. Even today, uh, C and C++ are being used in, in, in different organizations by different developers trying to solve uh, a wide range of uh, problems. So the Java language uh, inherits its syntax from the language C++ and also uh, Rather, the Java language inherits its syntax from C, and from C++, the Java inherits uh, the object model. So Java is an object-oriented programming language. Okay, so as we progress, we'll see uh, this uh, design paradigm, which is known as the object-oriented programming, right? So the answer is yes. Okay, so features of Java. So these are the features of Java, the characteristics of Java. We are saying Java is simple. By simple, we mean Java has a set of cohesive features that make it easy to learn. Okay, like Java is typed, is a type typed language. Uh, so it's very simple. Let me just say it's simple. Okay, so the the the, the, the thing is. Uh, any language, if you know Java, you you would not uh, face challenges with uh, learning other languages. Okay, so it's secure. So it does a number of security uh, implementations that can be used, like uh, security APIs and the like. So Java provides a secure means of creating internet applications. So it's portable, meaning Java can execute in any environment with a Java runtime okay, environment. So as long as you have installed Java on your machine, it means uh, you can run a program that is written in Java. So it's object-oriented, like I was saying. So these features inherited from the uh, C++ language. So it, it embodies the object-oriented programming philosophy. Okay. So uh, robust, Java encourages error-free programming by being strictly typed and perform runtime checks. Okay, so uh, Java is uh, multi, it has this feature which is multi-threaded, meaning uh, it allows to develop applications that can perform uh, different tasks at the same time. So Java provides integrated support for multi-threaded uh, programming. So it's architecture neutral, meaning it is not tied to any specific specific machine or operating system architecture. So you can have uh, a Java program running on a Mac machine, Mac OS machine, and you can have one running the same program running on the Linux and on Windows. So interpreted Java supports cross-platform code through the use of bytecode. So it's an interpreted language. So after the compiler does its thing, compiles your uh, your your file, your, your program, it is turned uh, the program is turned into bytecode. Okay. So this bytecode can be used to run on a number of uh, platforms. Right, so high performance, the bytecode is highly optimized for speed and execution. So 
very fast like that. Okay, distributed Java uh, can also be used to design distributed uh, uh, systems. Okay, for the internet uh, as well. So Java was designed with the distributed environment of the internet in mind. So we can have a number of uh, systems working together uh, to achieve one goal. And then the last feature is dynamic. We are saying Java programs carry with them huge amounts of runtime, uh, huge amounts of runtime type information that verifies and results access to objects at runtime. So it's quite dynamic. So it, it is doing this. It is, uh, it, is, it is doing one thing and uh, also considering other things at the same time. So let us look at the applications of Java. These are the uses of uh, the uh, Java programming language. So we are saying for mobile applications, Java is the language that is widely used uh, to develop uh, mobile applications. So Java is considered as the official programming language for mobile application development. It is compatible with software such as Android Studio and the uh, programming language Kotlin. So Kotlin uh, is a programming language that is used widely now by many developers to develop Android applications. So if you want to go into a uh, mobile app development, uh, look for the Android Studio uh, software, okay, Lane Java, and to be on your, you'll be good to go uh, with mobile development. The reason is that Java can run on uh, virtual machines, which is the JVM, whereas Android uses the DVK, the Dalvik, uh, virtual machine to execute class files. So the DVK is similar uh, in uh, configuration or in performance. It, it does the same thing as uh, the virtual machine. That's why Java can be used to develop a desktop application as well as a mobile application. So uh, we are saying uh, uh, the class files are uh, Ever had abandoned by an Android application package, the APK. Okay, so so these class files are put in an APK, and then this is uh, the one you get to install on your machine, uh, rather on your uh, mobile device. So with Java, it's and it's OPP, I mean rather OOP principles. That's object-oriented programming principles provides better security and ease of simplicity with Android. So uh, Java is a good uh, language if you want uh, to do uh, mobile applications. So Java for the desktop applications, the GUI, okay, the graphical, graphic user interface applications. So we are saying all desktop applications can easily be developed in Java. So Java also provides GUI development capability uh, through various means, mainly through abstract windowing toolkit. So it's just the technique of uh, developing uh, uh, you know, uh, desktop uh, applications where you can integrate a number of things like menus, you know, patterns, whatever. So that's the uh, technology. Right there, which is there, okay, the capability. The swing, you can use swing, also an advanced uh, uh, technology or technique of developing desktop applications. You can use Java FX, which is also used for web development. So these are some of the uh, technologies that you can use to develop uh, the Java GUI applications. So we have uh, Java FX, AWT, Swing, uh, SWT. We also have Apache Pivot in the frameworks like SwingX, Jengoodies, Qt, Jambi. 
Okay, so you can use these technologies to build your uh, desktop applications. So AWT, the abstract we know into it holds a number of pre-assembled components like menus, list, buttons okay, that you can just okay, use to put on your, uh, your, your frame like that. So Swing is also a GUI widget uh, to kit. It provides certain advanced elements like trees, scroll, pens, tables, dubbed pen, and lists. So it's, it's, it's an amazing thing once you get uh, to this uh, level of developing uh, GUI applications. Okay, web applications. Web applications, you know, applications that run on the internet can also be implemented uh, using this uh, uh, language, Java. Yeah. So Java is also used to develop web applications. Okay, it provides fast support for web applications to server it. So it's also a technology that you get to learn. Once you're done with your core Java, okay, you can jump to server it, you can jump to JSP, Java server pages. Okay, you can look at these frameworks like Struts, and you can also look at uh, Spring Boot or Spring and a number of uh, uh, frameworks that you can consider. Like from this picture, we have Hibernate there, JUnit, uh, or testing there, uh, or testing web applications. Right? So the easy coding and high security offered by this programming language allow the development of a large number of applications for health, social security, education, and insurance. So just name it. You, know, you can have a lot of uh, problems solved with uh, this uh, programming language. So it's a good thing uh, to begin with. Artificial intelligence. You know, everyone is talking about AI, you know, the integration of AI systems in uh, automobiles, like, you know, self-driving cars, uh, in medicine, there's artificial intelligence, you know, like robotics in industries, it's just everywhere, you know. Now, Java is, is not letting you down, the developers, not letting us down, right? So uh, the creators of, of Java, okay, the, the guys managing Java, at Oracle, they are moving with time. So Java now is seeing uh, uh, updates every after six months. So we are, right now we are at Java 16, okay? So it has come with its own features, you know? So Java is, is growing, it's, it's just moving up and up, okay? So in artificial intelligence, we have, okay, which is, the science and the engineering of making intelligent machines, yeah? especially intelligent computer programs. So many developers working on artificial intelligence find that Java is a good choice as a language to use for their projects. So Java scales well and is object oriented. So once you have a program, you can just keep on adding to it, adding to it. You know, there's uh, modularity in Java 9, you know, so you can have a system packaged in modules uh, so that you can easily maintain it so, and, and it can easily grow. Uh, you can just add modules to that uh, system so it scales very well. So there are open source artificial intelligence uh, libraries that are available to help uh, developers who are planning to use Java for AI projects. So we have benefits of AI here. We have debugging made easy, you know, system just debugging your code. It's quite painful to debug. You can spend a week, a month, just trying to figure out what's wrong with your program. So once you have uh, an AI program running in the background uh, as you are coding, so you may find that it is uh, gathering learning as you are developing your, your software your program it's learning uh, the patterns and 
once you reach the point of debugging, it knows where uh, the problem is coming from. So it will just help you to, to clear that out. So easy usage, you know, simplified work with large scale projects, better user interaction. So there are a number of uh, benefits of artificial intelligence. So if you want to, to, to go into AI, you can use Java. Although Python is there, you know, people are widely using Python for artificial intelligence, but you can also give Java a, a shot. For machine learning, okay, look at this guy, learning stuff. Huh? So Java is also used uh, in machine learning. Sorry, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. So machine learning looks at systems that can learn and improve performance based on the data that they process. So we subject a system to a huge uh, sets of data and then it's learning patterns, you know, putting things together and then with time it uh, picks up. So like, just like a child is, uh, is born and then with time the child, you know, learns a number of things, but with machine learning, this process is kind of heightened, it's quite fast, right? So there are algorithms uh, that uh, power machine learning. So these are the basis for developing, uh, for example, self-driving cars, facial recognition systems, and Java is there, right? So we have a platform which is Weka. So you maybe you can just Google Weka. It's an environment for knowledge analysis. Okay. So it was developed by the University of uh, uh, Waikato in New Zealand. So I think Weka is coming from Waikato, W from Waikato, and then knowledge analysis. Uh, no. Okay. So that's the thing. So it's written in Java. This platform for machine learning is written in Java and this provides a graphical user interface. It has command line user interface and the Java application programming interface. So it's a popular Java machine learning library uh, that's open source okay. that can be used. Is it open source? No, but it can be used or uh, developers are using this uh, the library. Uh, as a tool for machine learning projects. So this, you can check out infoworld.com. I think you can find uh, this blog right there. Big data. Big data uh, is just the collection of data from uh, different sources and putting it together, uh, learning patterns of this, uh, of this data. So there are many languages used with big data. So Java is often at the front and center for employing these tasks. So at InfoWorld, uh, there's an article where we, which explains why Java is a good choice. So Hadoop, uh, MapReduce, Java, HDFS, written in Java, you know, these are uh, frameworks that are all written in Java. These frameworks uh, are used for uh, big data. So we have Storm, Kafka, Spark, which run on the Java virtual machine in Koja and Scala also. Okay, these languages are used also to develop uh, some of these uh, uh, softwares. So we are saying Java is a first class citizen of these projects. Projects like Storm, Spark, uh, Flow, there's also uh, right, like, Hadoop, you know, HDFS, Yarn, which is there. So Java is, is used to develop uh, these uh, platforms for uh, uh, implementing big data uh, solutions. So Using Java gives you access to a large ecosystem of profilers, debuggers, monitoring tools, libraries for enterprise security and interoperability, and much more besides, most of, of which 
have been battle tested for the past two decades. Okay, so this is coming from an article, from an article uh, at InfoLoud, so you can check it out. All right. So blockchain, you know, blockchain, like everyone wants to be rich, right? Everyone wants to invest, right? So blockchain is like uh, it's just like a grouping of, 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 of users, right? It, that's where, if, for example, you have some cryptocurrency that you 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 want to, to, to be using or transacting with. So you need to uh, find a blockchain where you be able to uh, transact. So this is a peer-to-peer -to -peer technology sort of, so it's peer-to-peer -peer connected like that. So it's a distributed ledger technology, DOT, that allows data to be stored globally on thousands of servers while letting everyone, anyone on the network see everyone else's entity in near time. So it's a distributed ledger. So it's it's a, it's a ledger, it's a grouping of uh, clients that can see and be able to, 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 to transact with anyone within that, uh, that blockchain. So we are saying we have a number of uh, cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, Bitcoin, there, these others, I don't know them. Okay, so we are saying. Oracle offers a blockchain platform. Some developers may want to use Java to develop or customize blockchain applications. Okay. So we are saying Java is there. So when you look at these, these are languages that are used to develop blockchains like C++, Java is there, C Sharp, Go, Not, JS, JavaScript. So Java is also there yeah, in, and used to implement uh, blockchains. Okay, so if you want to, to go into uh, blockchain development, you now you can uh, use Java as well. Games and okay, Java. So in game development, Java is there. You know, a number of games are being written in Java. You know, so if you like games, you can uh, use Java uh, to develop games. So we are saying we have languages that are popular, C++, uh, C Sharp, also Java is there. We have Python. So these languages are widely used to develop games, all right? But you can use Java as well. So because it's object-oriented, right? And so we are saying Java has many libraries that can be used to write programs for games. Like this library with the lightweight. So you can just Google lightweight. Uh, it's a game library. Uh, M -O -W -J -G -L. So it enables a cross platform access to application programming interfaces such as OpenGL, Locan, etc. So you can use OpenGL as a, a API uh, to implement. Uh, games or to develop games in Java. So uh, we've come to the end of this video. Hopefully uh, you found uh, this video uh, interesting and has helped you to see uh, the usefulness of uh, the Java programming language. So you can uh, research more on, on any uh, application that you would want to, to, to to concentrate on, okay? So if you, in, you want to go into mobile development, you can research more on how you can uh, use the Java language uh, to develop uh, mobile apps. So thank you so much uh, for sticking uh, with me up to this uh, point. Uh, it's Mubanga here at Thriving Court, and uh, hopefully in the near future it becomes 
uh, Thriving Code Academy, you know, and uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, share the video so that others can also have access uh, to this information. Thank you so much until next time.